Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Hugo games for the GBA. Hugo the Evil Mirror is a good game for kids, but for adults it's too simplistic and easy. The story in the game is that the witch Scylla has imprisoned Hugo inside a mirror and then broke it into three parts. Now Hugo's kids go after the pieces to free their father. The game consists of 20 puzzles and a boss battle per each mirror piece, so 60 puzzle levels and 3 bosses. Hugo's kids have a freeze ray equipped. This will be useful since you need to freeze monster generators. And they are in such positions that you need to freeze a monster into a cube and move the cube in order to reach the generator. There are also shielded enemies that are only vulnerable from behind. The game is very easy to beat and fairly short. As I said, unless you're a little kid, you are not the target audience for the game and you shouldn't play the game. But for kids, it, it can be great to get accustomed to games or to just give the game to your kids to have some moments of peace. Hugo Bukazum, at first glance, is just a stereotypical isometric racer, but it isn't. It still gets boring pretty fast, it's true, but considering what the small cartridge packs, on paper, the game is pretty good. It, it's great, actually, on paper. You get many sorts of events to compete in, which can be split into two. You get race types and arena types of competitions. There are 9 maps available, a nice number, I know games that have less maps than this game. And you get 7 playable characters, a good number. And as for the gameplay, it's the usual isometric racing. The game gets boring really fast, but considering the nice amount of content the game has, the game is a good one. I mean, it's better than other games of this sort. I've played worse. Agent Hugo Robo Rumble on the GBA can get to be pretty frustrating, as it forces you to complete many of the game's levels by muscle memory. By trial and error, you learn the layout of the track and get to pass. And just like on the PS2, there is a button assigned to each of the board's abilities. You can activate your shield, with the other you shoot, and with another you jump when you hover above ramps. But on the PS2, it was pretty comfy to just hover around. On the GBA, on the other hand, later on in the game, due to the poor visibility you have ahead, you will have to learn the track by muscle memory to pass. And the game is pretty short too, it takes you around 1 hour to beat. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to support me my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, click the join button and choose one of the perks. You have the link to the join button in the description. Also, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord if you want. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.